Okay. Um, so this week I put my son in a uh, totally cool summer camp for my with my church. Um, and I, I think it would be good just to kind of get him out there so that he could talk to others and make some friends and uh, meet some uh, children from our com church community. Um, so this week is totally fun and totally religious for my son. Totally, because it is totally to us. Um, totally yours. So this week he's going to be totally Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, um, so today I wanted to talk about this book. Uh, it's a really good book. It's very, it's very generalized. Uh, but it is from the British perspective. Um, and uh, I am going to write a, another book that is side by side, side and goes along with this book. But my book is going to be understanding American politics and government instead of just understanding in the general view government and politics uh, from the British perspective. Um, I'm not sure if I could do the cool um, artwork that Osborne does. Uh, my, my son did say that he was going to try to add some artwork. Uh, he's really good at drawing. Um, my son is really good at drawing and I was just going to let him kind of add some of his take uh, with drawings um, and we'll read it together. But I wanted to give my take, and in the first, so I, if when you go into this, they have a really nice index of what um, the book is about, um, the content, and they go into, they start out with all about politics. But instead of me telling you what they're writing about, which is very um, general, uh, a very general view of politics, I wanted to explain to you what American politics is all about and pretty much in America um, politics is just an umbrella term for anything and and everything about who runs what program and which program and how um, politics in America covers the way politicians manage the affairs of government and how people govern themselves um, and that's a, and, and in today's politics um, I believe that that um, the current climate uh, wants to to kind of unite with the world. So, but I will. I'm going to be writing a book. So you'll if you once I finish, um, please buy my book, buy this book, and then you can write your own commentary on what you think. Um, but pretty much. Um, in this book, it says that uh, politics covers the way people make decisions about how uh, how to work together in all kinds of groups, um, and I, I, I politics, in my view, is uh, more about how politicians make decisions um, uh, and how we're supposed to work together. Um, so it's so the, while the world is more top down, we are bottom up. Um, and so, so I, I kind of differ in some of the things that, um, this book has to say about politics. Um, and, and it is true. Politics is everywhere. Um, it's in uh, just about anything you could talk about. Uh, if you're interested in education, politics is in education. If you're interested in economics, politics is in, is in economics. Um, it, it is true. Uh, but to me, politics is a part of liberal arts, and it cover and which liberal arts is really everything. Um, and they don't teach liberal arts the way they used to. So the current, so and it covers philosophy, theology, and um, when Americans talk about politics, uh, we are talking about every every aspect of society and how our politics affects the people through. Uh, law and policy. Um, they kind of give a more general, um, a more. This book kind of gives a more general overview of that, um, and it's really pretty because it also gives sort of like little pictures and, bur and blurbs. Um, 
who is in charge? Well, in my opinion, in America, the people are sovereign and the states are sovereign as well. Um, along they have the states have a dual sovereignty with the federal government, um, and the federal government it has always been limited by the law of the land, which is the Constitution. Um, here, hence we the people get to talk um, to our government officials and tell them what to do. It's not the other way around, which is why so many uh, freedom. Uh, loving people uh, were against the masks because it's not government's job to impose an emergency on us it is the government to tell us um, the information give us the information um, and um, let us the people decide what is best for us but the problem with what happened last year was a pandemic and the covid is that the government was not giving us um enough information about what covid was how to protect ourselves um so that we can make a good decision on um how to protect ourselves so what the government was doing last year they wanted a trump to impose uh, lockdowns and they wanted Trump to impose mass mandates at a national level and you can't do that because the federal government at the national level is limited and that is how our founding fathers wished uh, America to be. Our national government, we, we are not governed by the national government like in most places around the world. Um, it, it's, it's better that way because the states are closer to the people and they know their people. Um, and the other problem was that some states that were more Democrat, they were imposing and creating fear um, in the people rather than giving information to the people and allowing the people to decide what is best for themselves. Um, and that the reason is that uh, our government was uh, set up to protect our rights, our natural rights given by God. Um, the Constitution empowers you. And when they declared independence from uh, Brit Great Britain, they, uh, they memorialized um, a set of rules to govern government so that government remains limited and and does not impose on our rights so what they did was they they said they memorialized first of all because the idea is that we are governed by um, God's law and um, we have a certain inalienable rights, natural rights, natural law rights that um, are given to us by God, not man. Um, and those rights cannot be imposed on by the government. Um, and so, so we the people are empowered by those rights and we govern ourselves if we are all moral and we're learning uh, moral law, which comes from the Bible, um, we are going to be able to govern ourselves well and govern society well. Um, and so that is why uh, in America, you are free to choose um, and uh, you agree to be governed by law. Um, and government is governed by law. So we are a republic. We are not a democracy. Um, democracy, most of the world is a democracy, but the problem with democracy is that it can slowly turn into a totalitarian government. There are not enough controls in a democracy to control the will of the powerful and the elite in government. So our re we are a republican form of government, and in a republican form of government, you are governed by law. And the supreme law of the land is a, is a constitution. We do have a constitution, and right now our government is cutting through that constitution. Um, so, okay, so the other thing is who has the authority? The constitution is the law of the land and that is our authority. Um, that gives the people the authority and the power to govern uh, and themselves and for government to be controlled and governed. Um, the constitution has the authority to tell government what, um, 
what to do. And in America, uh, ma, um, everyone else uh, depends on a contract. So we have contracts with people. We have contracts with Facebook. For example, I wrote this really good pleading uh, to Facebook. And I, I haven't really sent it in because, uh, well, you know, Facebook is... And has an indem is indemnified, um, is indemnified by a so-called law that our Congress, our national government Congress, instilled says that um, you can't sue big tech. Um, so Section two thirty precludes this, and right now there is a law that has been introduced. Um, so I'm praying that it passes because it will give us the power to sue big tech um, when they impose and they um, violate the contract with users online. Um, so so this is really cool. Uh, it's really amazing. I know that I'm talking about, a, from my perspective, what is government? Well, uh, you got to look at what they say for what is government, and they are very general, again. Um, but in my view, in America, what is government? Who's in charge? is supposed to be the people. We, the people, are sovereign, and we, the people, are govern ourselves, and we govern those who manage the affairs in government. We elect uh, representatives in government, and those representatives need to listen to we, the people. They cannot listen to uh, the NEA or the SCFR. Um, they cannot listen to special interest groups because we, the people, individual people, are the special interest groups. We, the people, elect them to do our will and to manage the affairs for us and to protect our rights uh, to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's why when, when, you, when the left says that uh, it's a woman's right to have an abortion, well, is it really our right to have an abortion, to impose and to kill another innocent life that is growing inside of us? Is it really? I mean, come on, answer my question. Uh, there is a life in there, and that life has as much purpose and as much right to be able to live their life. Um, and we are blessed with a life in us. So if we, uh, if we kill that life, are we ourselves becoming murderers? Okay, so, so really you got to think about it because government is supposed to protect life, liberty, and property. It's not happiness. It got changed. It's really property. Our founding fathers believed in property and that all of us should be owning our own property so that we can grow and do whatever the hell we wanted in that property. Um, the people have a final say about how to run society. America is the finest society. Um, and we are tolerant because the Constitution empowers us um are, are are you okay so in here they say the people govern the people in a government need uh, to have authority well in in america the authority is god okay the creator he memorialized that that all of us are created in his image so all of us are equal in his image but we all are, we are different, and thus we must treat each other differently. Um, so, so the authority uh, given to the people and uh, the Constitution. Um, okay, so. Uh, so so now in chapter one, they explain democracy, and we are not a democracy. Um, our founding fathers knew history, and they absolutely did not want to create a democracy because in a pure democracy, um, uh, uh, the majority will rule, and uh, let's say you have uh, a majority of people that say, we need to take away your your house. 
And so, but you're like, but wait a minute, this is my house. So if the majority rules that they want to take away your house, they could come over here and take you out of your house and get rid of you. So that's a democracy. A democracy, uh, and and our founding fathers... Um, so... This is accurate, actually, in saying that uh, the rebels in America, it does use rebels. So our uh, it was not a revolution that we had in America. A revolution is in a democracy. Um, here in America, we rebelled against the king of England for imposing uh, double taxation and imposing rules against uh, freedom to, to worship. Um, and so we rebelled against the king because... He was imposing uh, these taxes without representation, and there were other issues that we did not, that we were just absolutely fed up with. Um, so th that is accurate in the in 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 his in their determination of democracy. Um, so uh, and I I agree with the ancient democracy um, and what it is. It came from Greece. Um, and it explained that majority rule, well, it doesn't really explain majority rule, it doesn't say majority rule, but democracy is rule by majority. Um, so in that sense, uh, it, it, but it, it does say it means rule of the people, majority rule of the people. So if the majority says that we're going to do this, the minority is kind of out of, out of it, out of it. Uh, the Roman Republic, it's pretty ac accurate on what it says about the Roman Republic. Um, and how it fell, um, the dictatorship, the emergency such as rebellion, invasion of war. Um, I agree. Um, a lot of these, these the Repub the Roman Republic, uh, turned into a, a dictatorship, um, and that's why our founding fathers, rather than say, okay, we are a republic, or we are republican, and we are um, ruled by. Um, by law, not kings or queens or or monarchs or um, dictatorships. Uh, uh, we are, so in the republic, we are ruled by law, and that's what a republic means. Um, but we, we don't have emperors, we don't have, because in our, in our system of government, we have a separation of powers, and we have a mixed form of government. So every society has its own set of government. So in America, uh, the state is supposed to check the federal government. Um, in the federal government, uh, they're balanced, they're separated. And so each, each, uh, each branch is supposed to check each other. Um, the judge the, in the court, they interpret law. And the court is supposed to really interpret the, the, the law against the Constitution. Is this law uh, uh, constitutional? Um, if it's not constitutional, then it's null and void, and we don't have to follow it. Um, federalism, that they're pretty accurate on that. Self-government, okay, so then they go into and they explain absolute monarch. I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, I'm going to talk about self-government. Um, and I wrote my own little... Um, my own little set of notes, and I pretty much said... Okay, so where I said in 1773, the British changed how ta tea was taxed without American colonists. This led to the act of rebellion known today as the Boston Tea Party. But that tea was like the last straw. And so uh, the the reason for the rebellion is the, the, the king was already imposing his will on the American colonists. And so by the time it came to the tea, they said, I'm not, we're fed up. <laughs> so, um, so it was just one last thing that fed the American patriots up. Um, kind of like now, um, the patriots are kind of fed up. Um, so then in the 13 regions, remember that, uh, the America, America started with 13 colonies. Um, and those 13 colonies became states. Um, because remember that the rest of America was Spain, Spanish, and French, and the French and the Spanish were very good at, um, becoming friends with the indigenous population, and they were very good, the French were very good at converting, 
um, the indigenous population. I think more so than the Spanish. Um, but but so you got to remember that that most of America that you see today was not um, English. Um, so that's another little thing that um, I, I like to put in there. And the Declaration of Independence was drafted. I'm sorry, um, I got cut off and I had to kind of wait until my phone uh, charged up a little bit again. Um, so I'm back on track. And I was talking about democracy in America. There, democracy, we don't have a democracy. Um, our founding fathers created a constitutional republic. And um, Congress makes law in, in accordance with the people and the Constitution. Um, if their laws are unconstitutional, then it's null, null and void, and we the people do not have to follow it. And the president does not have to um, enforce that law if he agrees, if he thinks that it's unconstitutional. Um, so the USA is not a majoritarian rule system capable of changing with the wind. Um, we are we are a constitutional republic, and the Supreme Court interprets the U.S. Constitution. They don't make law. So this Roe versus Wade is not law. It is just an an opinion of the court, um, because at the time there was no evidence where there is now. Uh, evidence. Um, so the justice sort of like weaved in some fuzzy uh, thoughts into uh, Roe versus Wade. Um, and it is unconstitutional because the whole purpose of government in America is to protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, so people are corrupted by power. Power corrupts people. Uh, so when people like uh, these people who have been in Congress forever, um, they the more mo the more power they have, the more money they have, the more corrupt and they become, um, and that's a problem in America. Uh, democracy in, in the UK uh, is quite accurate. I am not going to go off on that because I don't know the UK system. I all I know is that. We use their common law, and uh, we, our founding fathers, um, the states in the in the time of, which are the colonies, they set up their constitution according to common law. Um, so, uh, I like what he says about navigating the system, um, a system which civil servants run the day to day business of government, um, is called a bureaucracy. Um, Local politics, uh, in America, we have different levels. And so we have a local government as well. And in America, we have state government um, as well as federal government. So there's federal politics, there's local politics, there is state politics. Um, so I, I kind of like that. Um, many of the biggest countries in the world... Um, Okay, most countries that say that they're a republic aren't like America. And um, so Russia is a communist nation. Communism was not dead with the Cold War. Um, because China is a communist nation. But communism in Russia, the economic system of Russia fell and collapsed because communism is does not work with the economy. Um, in China, China's a different ball game, and they learned how to do the markets like America. Uh, and so they, in communism, the state owns everything. You don't own anything, and you have no rights. Um, so I'd, I wouldn't say that most of such as the US Germany are considered a federal republic i consider we're not a federal republic we are a constitutional republic the federal government is limited in the US um and the state governments have the power to regulate the people 
Um, in America, another thing that was uh, weird about nineteen uh, about the twenty the twentieth century is that Woodrow Wilson, when he came to power, he um, Woodrow Wilson expanded the government. And around 1913, uh, the government did a, I don't know how, if they did a proper convention of states, but they added a new amendment. I think it's Amendment 16. I don't have the Constitution in front of me, which allowed the federal government to tax directly, to tax the people directly. Whereas when the Constitution was in, established, Article 1, um, laid out the rules for the federal government and the state governments and what they're allowed to do. And the federal government was not allowed to apportion the people directly. So Amendment 16 could directly contradicts Article 1 because the apportionment of tax was left for the states to tax their own people. The states back then were supposed to pay fees or dues to be in the union. And so really the federal government's job was to regulate the states, not the people. And they were meant to regulate commerce and trade. And so they were allowed to tax on trade between the states. Um, and so that was their purpose. Their purpose was to regulate the states, keep the states in check, um, and the states were the ones that were to apportion us. Um, but that's my view. Uh, somebody might have, I, I mean, I, I, my, my memory is not that great. Um, but I do remember on the surface uh, a lot of things. Um, and I have a lot of ideas running through my head. Um, and international politics, the U our founding fathers never meant for the U.S. to ally with any government. Uh, we were supposed to be isolationists, and the U.N. is a direct contradiction of what our founding fathers meant for America. We, uh, our founding fathers agreed that we should trade with other countries, but we are not to form alliances with any country, and definitely not with communism with countries that are communist, like China, and Russia, and Cuba, and Venezuela. Um, we were meant to just pretty much trade, and our foreign policies were on trading, not forming alliances. So the UN is unconstitutional, and we need to get out of the UN. And um, this U, there's a new treaty that replaced NAFTA, which was U, U.S., um, Mexico, and Canada alliance. Uh, this uh, agreement that was made, um, on the face of it, sounds great, but what it does, it, it fuses our societies into one, and it makes it easier for a U.N., foreign power to control what goes on in the U.S. Um, mind you that Canada is socialist, Mexico is corrupt, okay? A lot of people that come from Mexico leave because of the corruption in Mexico. They don't leave for anything else. They leave because of the corruption. Canada doesn't leave, but they leave to get health insurance because their health and their universal health insurance doesn't work. It's all rationed, and it takes forever for a Canadian to get good health care. That's why in America, uh, the government cannot take control of you. That's socialism right there. And the government is not meant to control health care. Uh, health care is supposed to be an individual thing, and we get to pick our doctors according to who is good and knowledgeable and who does good customer service and attends to the patients and gives us good knowledge and educates us on health. Um, the government is not supposed to take care of us. I'm sorry, was excuse me. Um, and the UN, we need to, as Americans, we need to fight to get out of the UN. We just need to eliminate the UN. Eliminate it. Um, that's a fraud. Um, and right now, as we speak, 
we are slowly resetting and you might find and you do your own research i've done my own you might find that in a few months you're not going to recognize your country so these are these are tough times you might not see it we we're still on the surface free um but we need to be vigilant and we need to educate ourselves uh we need to get out of the un um i was talking about kamala harris and um i have no problem with her she um i think she is a citizen by birth and i will give her that she's a citizen she went to law school here in our country but where i have a problem is that our founding fathers laid out rules for who can be elected president or vice president and um Kamala Harris at the time of birth her parents were non-citizen students. Our founding fathers meant for for children of naturalized or natural born citizens to be president, to be eligible for president. Because Kamala Harris at the time of birth um she's a citizen by birth of California because her parents had no intent in be naturalized and becoming lawful citizens and uh upholding saying i um i agree to be governed by the constitution um she citizenship flows from her father and her father at the time was a british jamaican and so her citizen her, she is a natural born citizen of jamaica If an American is born if a child of of two American citizens, two naturalized uh or US citizens, um natural born citizens were born in another country, um they will they will be citizens of the US as well. Um the problem is so citizens by birth is not the thing because they would be citizens by birth of the country where they are from but they are american because their parents are american so kamala harris's parents were not american they were non-citizen students at the time of her birth and so kamala harris is a natural born citizen of jamaica and a native citizen of india so in our constitution she is not eligible to constitutionally to be president because she is not a natural born citizen natural born citizen not to be confused with a uh, citizen by birth so she I, she had a right to almost anybody can be a citizen by birth that doesn't mean that you can you're eligible to be president or vice president and right now we have somebody in there who has an allegiance issue um her allegiance is compromised because who is she does she, is she american is she indian or is she jamaican um has she relinquished her citizen her dual cit- her triple citizenship from her 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 jamaican citizenship and her indian citizen um right now as we speak she kamala harris has um family in india who are politicians if she were to go to india in her in in the law back in 1964 when she was born um kids of uh indian kids who can run for office in india so is her allegiance with america or is her allegiance not only that but in 1972 kamala harris uh, parents divorced um and her mom shortly after moved to canada her mom had no intent in becoming american she came to this country purely to study and then she made an arrangement with her father who was um a foreign diplomat of india at the time to to marry into an arranged marriage which didn't happen because she uh conceived Kamala out of wedlock and so she had to marry um her her husband um Don Harris um at the time so so that didn't happen and so 
she finished her her degree in 1964 she became a phd and then in 1967 her father became a phd of economics and um then in 1972, because they were separated already and Don was uh, doing his uh, internship or he was working for, for a university in another state, uh, she did not follow him. And I guess it's really strained their marriage. And in 1972, she filed for a divorce and uh, won full custody of her daughters and moved shortly after to Canada. So around eight or nine, uh, Kamala Harris moved to Canada and she did not come back until 1984. So in 1984, she came back to go to college. Um, in immigration law, did if, if her father naturalized before, nine, before she was 18, which would be 1978, 1979, um, then she could claim her uh, American citizenship. But at the time, uh, her mom lost her right to become naturalized in this country. So after a first certain years, you have to restart your application for citizenship. Um, so her mom, um, so pretty much Kamala Harris was formed in Canada. Um, she graduated from a Canadian co uh, academy or high school and um, most of her advocate so she is formed in a socialist country um, and she did was not raised in to uh, in America and learned the Americanism way of life um, that's a problem for me because now she did she did her mom get citizenship in Canada we don't know um, I have no clue and I don't have access to that kind of information but she needs to have uh, Somebody needs to file a declaratory judgment on Kamala and have Kamala um, give us that evidence um, of citizenship, proof of proof of eligibility to be president or vice president. Because Biden is old and she may step into his shoes at any day or any or any month right now. Um, I, I, I'm not. So the only issue I have is that she's not eligible. Um, she is a citizen. I agree. She was a citizen by birth uh, of Ca uh, California, but I don't. But the court has never defined what is a natural born citizen. And Kamala in the campaign trail last year, she said that the Fourteenth Amendment makes her a citizen, a uh, natural born citizen. That is not true because. There is an exception in uh, Amendment 14 of the Constitution that says you have to be subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. At the time of her birth, um, Kamala Harris was a citizen uh, by birth. Oh, what a, I made a boo boo. Somebody called me. Um, but Kamala Harris uh, uh, um, was subject to the jurisdiction of Jamaica and India at the time of her birth because her parents were non-citizen students um, at the time of her birth. And um, so the U.S. had limited jurisdiction over her, so she's not a natural-born citizen because her parents were not naturalized or lawful residents. Uh, Wong uh, says that you're a, a citizen by birth if uh, your parents were here, uh, were lawful residents and established their residency here. Um, so she is a citizen by birth, but she is not a natural born citizen. And that natural born citizen was never defined by the court. So sh the courts really do need to look into what is a natural born citizen. And you have to start where the founding fathers started because none of the founding fathers were natural born citizens. Um, when they won the war, and they declared independence, and the Constitution was ratified, at that time, they became naturalized. Um, so what they meant, according to a, a law professor, is that um, only, only children of natural-born citizens or, or children of naturalized citizens could inherit the presidency. So... Um, 
So she really does need, we need to uh, question her on that because uh, sh she was limited. The U.S. had limited jurisdiction over her, her birth. Um, and she was, she's a, she's a Jamaican uh, through and through, and she's an Indian citizen as well. Um, so I, I am kind of concerned because her allegiance is in question. Okay, so this book is really good. I know that I've kind of gone over. And then the elections is another interesting, but the, the Founding Fathers did leave elections a little bit open. And uh, candidates, candidates in America are usually separate from political, um, what did I write? Entities um, in America. So we elect people. And the reason we elect people in America is so that we have direct access to them and we can communicate with them. Um, a lot of special interest uh, groups have kind of confiscated uh, our elections and they because money talks uh we the people are compromised because most a lot of people don't have the kind of money that an organization has um so a lot when you vote for people you really want to vote for people who uphold the constitution who are moral and who are going to go for your interests not necessarily a group interest because that's a majority rule and that's a plurality. Um, so in America, we have sort of, uh, the, the 20th century has sort of allowed for a, plurad a plurality, an oligarchy to penetrate our society. We have electoral registries and most adult citizens can vote if they are American citizens and they're citizens of that state. So your jurisdiction in that state, your domicile, the place that you are um, living right now, that is your jurisdiction. Um, and if you're American and you're 18 and over, you can vote. Non-citizens cannot vote in America. If you are not an American citizen, if you have not naturalized or uh, become a U.S. citizen, you cannot vote in America. Uh, so here it says that some citizens can vote too. No, they can't. They cannot. That's that's fraudulent. Um, so um, I would separate what the world does, and I would separate what the U.S. does. Um, so in America, it talks about the suffrage. I haven't read it all clearly. When voting goes wrong, when voting goes wrong, like this election, um, it means that there is some kind of uh, anomaly or some kind of uh, fraud that happened. In America, fraud has never really happened. Um, but I believe that this election uh, did go wrong. And I do believe that um, certain, Ill certain things were illegally done and we're problematic. Um, I hope it doesn't, this is not a trend. The media in America, anybody could be a journalist. The media in America is to be remain free. That is why we have the freedom of speech. So anybody can talk and voice their opinion online, offline, anywhere, anytime. You cannot infringe on anybody's freedom to voice their opinion. But you know what? I do agree with censuring um atheists because that's a problem uh, in america we are uh, a nation under god and if you do not believe in the creator then you can you do not believe in the constitution because memorialized in the declaration of independence is a c a big c and michael knowles uh, just reminded me of that and um, so in America, we are all created equal, but we're all different and need to treat each other differently uh, because we have different personalities and we have different opinions. Um, so the media was to remain free. And the 20th century sort of changed, the me changed some of the media and the elections um, in our country. And... Uh, so the media is supposed to, we're supposed to have investigative media and give us the facts. 
and we we in America are supposed to be literate enough to know what to do with those facts. Um, but the problem with last election is that we had big tech censuring people who had an opposing view or a different narrative. Um, so I, I think uh, the electoral system, um, we are a proportional representative system. Um, we're sort of like all three, proportional representation, majority, plurality. The Our founding fathers really didn't elaborate on electoral systems. Um, but I do, I do like how they explain a little bit of this proportional. Um, I might uh, go back into my political, when I was studying politics and government in uh, college, and I might re redo some of those definitions. I can't remember offhand what I wrote. I wrote a really good paper and I got an A um, because I just followed what the teacher, his outline and his layout in my paper. Um, so he wanted to see uh, different different definitions and different things to see if we understood what they meant. Um, PR is the most commonly used uh, around the world. Uh, so we are we are a pl plurality here. And a plurality, what do they say about a plurality? Um, let me see if it's, it says... Uh, voting and majority voting around eighty countries. So the uh, the 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 president is not elected at the at the the president is elected at the local level, and then we have electoral colleges to kind of make it more even, so that the states who are smaller do not be do not become overpowered by the states that are bigger. Uh, which is the National Compact is um, unconstitutional because of that. Um, so it, usually in local level elections, you, a majority rule. So whoever gets the most votes wins. But in the national level and the president, it's different. Only the president uh, is has um, has has an electoral college. Um, it, I would say that it's pretty accurate. Um, he 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 does a really good job. I would lay it out a little bit different uh, for the American system. Um, loitering and lobbying. Um, I, I would say that's pretty accurate with uh, with big uh, pressure groups, um, and that's the reason why our, our founding fathers feared and did not like big uh, business. Because big businesses tend to trump over little businesses. So our founding fathers really agreed to um, small business, mom and pop businesses. Because they, they tend to be more customer service oriented. They tend to care more for the customer than a big business. And bear in mind that big businesses are created by government. They're man-made. Um, our constitution we have inalienable rights that come from God. So business does not have inalienable rights. They have rights that are set by government. And they can do certain things within those governmental given rights. But our individuals are have inalienable rights that government cannot impose on. And that's why we have a constitution to limit the government. Um, I would say that revolution is for... Uh, democracies a lot of times they have revolutions and they turn totalitarian and uh, which is how Cuba uh, Cuba was infiltrated and they sort of became a democracy um, and they went away from the Republican form of government um, under Batista and that's why Castro took over um, Nationalism, uh, nationalism in this country is not like most of the world. Um, we are really citizens of each state. Uh, I was born in Florida, and then I moved to Colorado. And um, so now my domicile is here, and um, I guess I'm a Coloradan. <laughs> I used to be Floridian, and sometimes I want to go back because I'm, I want to be free. Um, I believe in freedom over 
security. Um, where do we stand? Left to right. Okay, so our, our founding fathers never believed in parties. But the parties are only meant to kind of help pick a candidate. Um, that's about it. You're really not Republican or Democrat. You're really, uh, we should read about the Constitution or the Bible. Um, and that's what makes us American. Um, most countries have, uh, Italy has a ton of parties. England has a ton of parties. And the party is the one that runs the government. So the majority party runs the government. In, in our country, the individual uh, manages the government, not the parties. The parties are just to gather people and to um, pick uh, candidates and uh, make sure that people... So the parties are only meant for that purpose. Um, it could be better. Political ideology. So I consider myself neither. I'm more constitutional. Um, I believe in our constitution. I believe in what the founding fathers created. It's lasted. It's the, it's lasted the most uh, through the years. We're over two hundred and fifty years old, and I believe that uh, I believe in our system usually. And so I'm not a globalist. I'm sorry. Was excuse me, and I know YouTube might censor me, <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, I I love our I love our government. I love my freedom. Um, I, what is immigration? We are a nation of immigrants, yes, and that's why immigration law was not formalized until 1870. Um, at that time, the one, the reason that we formalized it was because we had communist Chinese, we had Chinese people, and it was, China was not communist back then. It was imperialist, um, sort of communistic. It was authoritarian. Um, I think China is communist. No. Um, but we formalized it and we've had formal immigration laws since 1870. Our founding fathers did not want to formalize the immigration law. But they did set, set rules for people in those times. Um, maybe they should have. But they were kind of worried because everybody was an immigrant. Um, feminism has gone too far in this country. Um... We don't have underrepresentation. We're the most tolerant form of government because we believe in individuals, individualism. Um, so I don't agree. Who's responsible for the for the planet? God is responsible for the planet in America. We individuals have a responsibility to keep things clean, and we it's a it's an individual responsibility thing, not a government thing. So that's where I would have at least explained that in America, God is responsible for the planet. And we are, have individual responsibility to take care of the planet. Uh, corruption is inevitable. Corruption is inevitable when we let government uh, rule top down the, and, uh, instead of we governing ourselves by law. So that's why um, Mexico is the most corrupt nation in the whole entire world and you can't really argue with people you're not going to convince people i tried but trust me i have um but what you can do is share ideas and ask questions socratically um whenever somebody tells you something ask a question and let them answer it themselves and they themselves will, pers will persuade themselves. So when I um, have an idea, I'm really looking for you to persuade me, not me to persuade you. Um, so when you're arguing, bear that in mind. And um, debate has, in America, you can't really debate anymore. Because if you're not for a certain side or a certain narrative, they're going to cancel you. So it's kind of scary these days right now. Um, but but learn, learn, 
what Amer un learn to understand American politics and government, and learn to understand what governments around the world and politics is like around the world, and make a comparison of it, and then be knowledgeable on who created our nation and why, and what their ideas were. Read the Federalist Papers. Um, read the Constitution, read the Declaration of Independence all the way through, um, and just ask questions. And don't argue with older people, because older people have experience to back them up. Um, and they will help you become knowledgeable, more knowledgeable, and understand the way things work. That's all for today, and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe my channel. And if you like this book and you want to learn more, it is a good book. I do recommend it. It's very general. Um, and what I like is that you can actually uh, go back and review those terms on your own and do some further reading. I believe they give a, they give a definition in the back. They have an index. They have a glossary. And they give you quick links to back yourself up online. Um, and you could go to Osborne.com, uh, quick links. And uh, in there, they will share um, links that you can learn more and get a better understanding of what government is like uh, in general. Anyways. Like and subscribe and go to k4699.myubam.com and please buy some books for your kids and happy educating and happy learning. And until next time, thank you very much.